Hey guys and welcome back to another design to manufacture video on Fusion 360. Today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. It really appeals to the hobbyists around there and it's inserting an S, not an SVG, a um, STL or an OBJ file into Fusion 360 and getting it into a form where it's editable. So we're going to play around with that now. We're going to show you guys how to insert how to convert that mesh, how to do any repairs if necessary, maybe even discuss some limitations in Fusion 360 for doing that, and then show you how you can quickly modify and do some stuff to your end product. So without further ado, let's get into it, and we're going to start off right away with inserting a mesh. Now, you can go into this option here, and you can open and you can find the file on your computer and it'll open up a new screen. That works. Or if you've already got a new file open, you can go over to your insert menu over here and go to insert mesh. Okay. We can go in there. I'm going to select one from my computer and scroll down a little bit. I'm going to bring in this Hyundai i20 mesh. It's going to take a little minute. It's a big file. All right, the reason I'm bringing this one in is it has multiple meshes in the body. So I can show you a couple of limitations with this one as well. So straight away, I'm going to change the flip direction. I'm going to make sure it's centered. I'm going to move it to the ground. And it's going to be nice and in the center now. I like to work with everything in the center of my origin if I can. All right, it's easier to do that before it's all been sent in. Now I can hit OK. And you can see I've got my mesh imported. All right. Now, if I go over to my bodies menu here, you can see there are a lot of meshes. All right. Each component is separate, hence the different colors and hence the different um, bodies that are highlighted over here. Now, a mesh isn't a solid so right now, I can't edit this in the solids menu. I can't set it up for cutting tool paths or anything like that. Purely because this is just basically like a trace or a, um, a shell of an object. So it has no internals. Um, so if I turn off, if I go right, I think the bottom one was the one. If I turn that off, you can go see straight inside. And you can see there's no internals in this whatsoever. All right. This is what you convert your files to when you export them as an SVG. Or SVG. STL or a OBJ. Um, this is what they come out with. If you want to edit your files later on, nice handy tip now is to export your files as a step file or an F3D file depending on what pro, what CAD program you're going to use later on down the track. That way you can still edit them as a solid and you don't have to go through this process. But let's get into this right now. We're going to start looking at the converting men, how to convert this file across. So what we are going to do is we are going to go to create form. So click create form. And it drops us in our form menu here. So you can see we're in the forms. And now we can actually start doing some things. So our first step is to select a mesh that's going to work. So there is limitations around triangles and the amount of um, uh, little squares that you see in each mesh. Obviously, the more there are, the more detailed your mesh is. And the more curves that are in it, the more triangles, all right? So it can be a little bit tricky with some shapes to get this right. You can simplify, you can try and repair them. And sometimes that works a treat and sometimes it just doesn't. Um, it's worth getting to know how to fix it. And there's a lot of really good videos on that as well, if this doesn't quite cover it for you. But we're going to try and test the limits of it today. So straight up, I'm going to do a component that I know works. So I'm going to go back into my bodies menu. And I'm going to select object one down here. This is the bonnet and a couple of the other pieces. And what I'm going to do right now, actually, is I'm going to turn off everything else for a second. 
just so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to click the top one. Oh, are you not going to click for me? All right. All right, I'm going to highlight as many as I can. I don't know why some of them aren't highlighting right now. I think it might be also right in the form menu. And we can right click and we can hide all of them at once. There we go. So now I'm just left with the component that I'm looking. That's a nice little trick for you guys. Instead of going through and individually clicking all of the little lights, you can click the top, go down to the bottom, shift click, selects everything in the column. And then you can right click and hit the little visibility icon. All right, now you can see I'm left with a few components. I know these ones will convert because I've done this recently for a job that I was working on. So we're going to select object one. All right, and then we're going to go to modify. All right, if I wanted to edit this, I can do them in here. All right, you can fill holes, you can erase and fill weld and unweld and all those sort of things all right that's all in the modify menu but in utilities we have a repair section so if there are any issues with your meshes you can hit the repair body and that will generally fix them but for now we're just going to hit convert and what we want is we want to do a quad mesh to t to t spline first all right so we're going to do that one selected new body Okay, and we're going to run that conversion. All right. And that should come through there. Beautiful. So that's looking really good. It's looking tidy. All right. That was step one. And then you can see that it's made all these new bodies. So I can now just individually do a body as a T-spline now. All right. I'm going to select body one only. And then I'm going to go back into my utilities and my convert. And then I can do a T-spline to a B-rep. Because this is a T-spline now. All right. We're going to make sure everything's all good and hit OK. All right. And once that's done, a T-spline to a B-rep. That'll come through as a solid now. And we can start looking at editing that. All right. You can see that's all there. And I'm back in the solid menu now. All right, so I can look at this. I can start press pulling faces. Oh, or some of them anyway. Just give it a minute. Fusion's been a little bit laggy lately for me. Um, I'm not 100% sure why. I think I might be hitting up max space on my computer. Recording all these videos, so I need to rectify that. Hopefully this doesn't crash out, and if it does, I'll cut, and I'll be back to where we are in a minute. All right, guys, we're back. Unfortunately, Fusion just had a bit of a crash then, but that's all good. We're back to where we were. Um, pretty much what's happening here is if you have a look at this model, it is so thin that it won't push-pull at the moment. Um, if you've got an actual mesh that forms a solid body, you're probably going to have a lot more luck with being able to do the push-pull tools and fillet stuff and all of those sort of things. But I'll still show you some of the things that I can do with this model to modify it, which is really, really handy. So first thing I'm going to do, though, is because I found that it sometimes it just doesn't like it if it's this thin, is I can quickly thicken it. So in the Create tool, we've got the Thicken option. I'm only going to thicken it by 0.1 of a mil. All right, I'm not thickening it by a lot. Just make it a little bit thicker so that way it accepts that it's not like a, a molecule thick. From there, I'm going to quickly create an offset plane. If you haven't seen this done before, basically it creates one of these planes, but it's offset by a distance. So I'm going to do that 100 mil off, all right, which is just hovering just above. I forgot to change the scale of this drawing when I brought it in, but that's okay. Uh, it's still going to work for this purpose. Create sketch. I'm going to pan down over here. And I'm going to throw a text box in over the top of the bonnet here. So I'm going to go text box. Like so. 
All right, my sample text is going to obviously be designed to manufacture. All right, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Perfect, that's aligned perfectly in that space. I'm happy with everything else. Hit OK, hit Finish Sketch, and you can see that sort of floating above that object. What I can do now is I can run that as an emboss. So I can select that design. I can select the face that I want to work put this design on and you can see once it stops being laggy um, that now I've got an emboss in my surface now this is one of the best ways that I've found to put anything onto a rounded surface so if you've got a pattern a design an image some text that you want to put on a rounded surface the emboss tool is the way to go do an offset plane draw it up make sure everything's working and then you can just hit the okay all right we're not going to have enough time after that lag issue for me to go through issues with um more complex models if they have more triangles in them um you will have to simplify it in the mesh menu if you guys want a hand on how to do that please let me know in the comments and i'll get another video out or a short that explains how to simplify your models down but until next time, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll catch us in the next video.